Um, but a, a hydrogen explosion in that in the King's Chamber would have caused that particular event. And if we go back, you know, to, to when that event happened, I think you can point to uh, points at points in time or time period where there were cataclysmic changes, uh, comet impacts or the like, where the Great Pyramid was not able to handle a huge influx of energy and it literally shook apart. So before 2001, this is a photograph of the ceiling of the Grand Gallery. And, and then in 2001, uh, after the pyramid had been closed for several months, everybody was uh, <coughs> claiming that Hawass was digging a tunnel from his bathroom over to the top of the, the, the Queen's chamber and other skullduggery. Uh, so, but they actually had cleaned it and it was uh, obvious because uh, if you look at the, the ceiling, you have these scorch marks and uh, funnily enough, they're, they're placed, uh, the placement of them or the location of them is directly above the slots where I theorized that the resonators were held. So that's a close, that's a close up of that. So that, that came after the book was published, but it's something that will be included in my, in my next book because an update is planned. Uh, when I first had the Giza Power Plant published, I, I was, they, a lot of people would say, well, when are you gonna write your next book? And I said, I would say, well, when I have something to write about, I'll write another book. And it was like, what, 12 years? Then I got the uh, Lust Technologies uh, published. And now 21 years later, I'm, I'm uh, getting back in the saddle and going to write a, a sequel to the Giza Power Plant because there's a lot of information that has uh, come forward that I think is, is very important. So anyway, as far as the function of the, the pyramid, um, <coughs> in uh, in 2016, I reached out to an acoustic engineer, uh, Robert Water, because I felt that there was one part of my book that could be fleshed out a little more, and that was on the internal acoustics and the movement of sound inside the Great Pyramid. So here, uh, He came, uh, we actually, I organized a trip for 2018, and we talked off and on, uh, and he was actually doing research on, on the, uh, the acoustics and had quite, a lot, quite a, uh, a lot of information that I could use. But one thing that we wa wanted to actually use, uh, have, was uh, a, uh, a, a, an authorized study, something that we would have to, you know, uh, apply to the Supreme Council of Antiquities, uh, work through a university, have a PhD lead, and uh, and so we did a an exploratory mission to Egypt in 2018, and we were blessed with a, uh, a tremendous amount of uh, of support uh, by Mohammed, by uh, the new director of the Giza Plateau, Ahmed Al Gindi. Uh, both beautiful guys, uh, absolutely wonderful personalities, and uh, and very much uh, believe that the Great Pyramid was the tomb of Khufu. However, they love to uh, learn more about the science of the pyramid, and I think it's kind of creeping into their consciousness, uh, especially when they when they're looking at the uh, the tech not the manufacturing technology of the ancients uh, that there was something more going on so while they still believe that Khufu um, was buried there and they'll, they'll, they're still looking for for his burial chamber they um, they're open to the idea that uh, at least those that I talked to are open to the idea that uh, maybe the burial occurred after and a previous culture actually uh, with, with a, more, greater, a greater set of tools and techniques and knowledge uh, actually